The betrayal of gay people by their heterosexual family members is as effective as it is undeserved. This confusing combination leaves us with a lifetime burden of having to try to come to terms with and understand the experience. One coping mechanism is to pretend that nothing is happening. Many gay people will say that their families are fine. But when you ask for details, this means, basically, that the gay person has not been completely excluded from family events. Or that their partner, if they have one, is allowed in the house. Very few experience their personhood, lives and feelings to be actively understood as equal to the heterosexual family members. Often, parents or siblings keep the person's homosexuality secret from others, or euphemize it. They vote for politicians who hurt gay people. They contribute to religious organizations that humiliate gay people. They patronize cultural products that depict gay people as pathological. They speak and act in ways that reinforce the idea of gay people as special interest. In many ways, the message is clear that the gay person is not fully human. But because many gay people know others who have been more severely punished by their family's prejudices, they look on their own continued compromised inclusion to be miraculously positive and a product of their own correct behavior. Dragon Age is a media franchise centered on a series of fantasy role-playing video games created and developed by Bioware, the entirety of which is currently owned by EA. Ah! The Dragon Age games take place on the fictional continent of Thedas, showcasing various fantastical scenarios across each installment, such as living through a zombie apocalypse, living through political insurrection, and living through a zombie apocalypse during political insurrection. Besides the game, there's also Dragon Age books, comics, short stories, a Netflix show, and whatever this is. All of which populate the world and the narrative with yet more material. I haven't read most of them because I'm busy, but as it happens, I know just enough to get a passing grade at Dragon Age lore nonsense. So, why am I here? Why are you here? And more importantly, why in the world would you lie to Dorian Pavis? In the world of Thedas, there exists a large, proud, and powerful empire called Tevinta. Unlike most nations across Thedas, Tevinta does not persecute its mages for the crime of being alive but instead elevates them to positions of power corresponding to their arcane skill. Society in Tevinta is segregated into various castes, with mages at the top and non-mages at the bottom. And also there's slavery, but that's not important and not relevant to the video. Because magical power is so inseparably tied to political power, Tevinta's nobility have taken up eugenics as a popular pastime, tracking lineages that display exceptional arcane aptitude and trying to marry into them as efficiently as possible in order to create the most powerful uber mage in the empire. In Tevinter, producing a good heir is paramount, and these good heirs are expected to do the same. As you can imagine, things are rather awkward if you are not straight. Of course, queerness does exist in Tevinta, taking the form of clandestine grinder hookups, but a publicly homosexual relationship that so openly challenges the status quo is um, very much out of the question. It is in this environment that Dorian is raised. Born to the noble house Pavis and expected by his proud, overbearing father to sire powerful mage babies as heterosexually as possible. However, despite being a star pupil, as well as a skilled mage, Dorian is a limp-wristed gay-gay homosexual gay, and firmly refuses to smother himself in misery for the sake of furthering his family line. In response, his father tries to... <sighs> turn him straight using blood magic. We've all been there. Dorian, please, if you'll only listen to me. Why? so you can spout more convenient lies. He taught me to hate blood magic, the resort of the weak mind. Those are his words. 
But what was the first thing you did when your precious heir refused to play pretend for the rest of his life? You tried to change me. I only wanted what was best for you. You wanted the best for you? Your fucking legacy. Anything for that. He was going to do a blood ritual. Alter my mind. Make me... acceptable. I found out. I left. Can blood magic actually do that? Maybe. It could also have left me a drooling vegetable. It crushed me to think he found that absurd risk preferable to scandal. Part of me has always hoped he didn't really want to go through with it. If he had. I can't even imagine the person I would be now. I wouldn't like that, Dorian. Are you all right? No, not really. This ritual is a transparent metaphor for conversion therapy, which, while not typically capable of vegetating the victim, is nonetheless dangerous and traumatic. Obviously, Dorian isn't very happy with this unforgivable betrayal and chooses to run away from home and join the Inquisition to save the world. His father is eventually very sorry for this horrifying abuse and chases after him to the south in order to apologize and hopefully get his son back. However, this is all information that the player doesn't know and indeed can't know until it is revealed during Dorian's personal questline. Um, spoilers, by the way. The quest begins when the Catholic Mother Giselle delivers a tearful missive by Dorian's father to the player character. Your reverence, I understand that you feel inadequate to the task of bringing Dorian to a secret meeting. Even in the asking, I find it difficult to believe myself, considering my son has rebuffed all contact. This is the only way. I know him. He would be too proud to come if he knew, even just to talk. That is all we wish to do. The thought of Dorian in the south, placing himself in the path of such danger, alarms us more than I can express. If this somehow succeeds, we have a family retainer at the Van Drule Hills watching for Dorian's arrival. He will bring the boy to us, somewhere private. If Dorian utterly refuses to go with him, it ends there. And there is nothing we can do. We are at our wits end. Dorian's shit dad, which I'll call shitlord for the rest of this video, requests that Dorian be tricked into a surreptitious meeting with him, and Mother Giselle agrees that's for the best. So, it is up to you to decide whether to tell Dorian that shitlord wants a reunion, or just lie to him and completely betray his trust in the process. Obviously, Dorian does not appreciate being lied to, but he'll go confront his father regardless of what choice you make. Once that happens, the player has two options. One is to encourage Dorian to leave, turn his back on Shitlord and never speak to him again, destroying any chance of reconciliation, but keeping him far away from his absolutely monstrously awful father. The second option is to encourage Dorian to hear him out, have some sort of heart-to-heart, -heart, and figure out a way to re-establish some manner of a father-son relationship again. Obviously, the onus should be on Shitlord to beg forgiveness, and even then Dorian would be fully justified in his refusal, but Shitlord is too proud to say anything closely resembling an apology until the 11th hour. That of the year, everyone. Naturally, this is a very charged topic and a very emotional beat in the plot, but I'm actually happy with how Inquisition handles it, for the most part. The question here is, what do you do when your piece of shit homophobic father tries to make amends? Do you deny him, preventing further potential abuse, but obviously leaving you really fucked up about your dad? Or do you give him yet another second chance and hope you can have a dad again? Regardless of what you choose in the game, there is no bad ending. Dorian won't be happy with your deception, and he certainly won't be happy if you dismiss him or try to take his father's side, but he will ultimately be fine either way. If he leaves Shitlord, he will have a conversation with you talking about how much he loves his father, but 
can't ever forgive him for what he's done, and if he stays with Shitlord, he will later tell you how the two managed to rebuild some of their relationship, though they still stand on shaky ground. Neither option is perfect, and neither option is bad, because this is a messy situation that can't be resolved by just picking the most optimal path to success. It's one of the few times where it's actually a good thing that Inquisition takes no sides and makes no judgement on which choice is the right one. It's a dilemma that many people have had or will have to face at some point, and the answer is… do whatever feels right for you. There's no wrong choice, only what you're prepared to sacrifice, what you are risking, what you're hoping to gain, and whether the exchange is worth it. The first time I played through this questline, I instantly gave Dorian his father's letter and advised him to stay away from his homophobic dad, once bitten, twice shy and all that. However, whenever I replay that portion of the game, I find myself ruminating on the choice more and more. I still always give him the letter, obviously, I'm not a monster, but each time it takes me longer to tell Dorian's dad to get fucked because fuck reconciliation, you try to hetero your own son with evil fucking magic and that's that. No mercy from me, baby! It's interesting, thematically, that Shitlord addresses his letter to a religious authority rather than anybody else within the Inquisition, and even more interesting that the entire questline itself begins with the fantasy Catholic priest approaching you first. It could have been Leliana or even Josephine to bring this matter to your attention, but no, it's a mother from the Chantry, Dragon Age's Joan of Arc Christianity. How curious that she supports lying to Dorian in the name of reuniting him with his shitty, somewhat apologetic father. Indeed, Mother Giselle disapproves of Dorian from the start because he is, um, Greek Orthodox, I guess? And she doesn't abide for an heathenship. There is a cutscene later on where Giselle expresses her distaste more openly, saying that it's bad for the Inquisition and the Inquisitor to associate with a mage from Tevinter. No hard feelings, Dorian. Your vibes are just too rancid for the South. The cutscene is more or less the same, regardless of your Inquisitor's gender. However, when I first played through it, I was doing the Dorian Romance playthrough, and um, well, just look at it. I don't know what you think you're doing. I'm being clucked at by a hen, evidently. Don't play the fool with me, young man. If I wanted to play the fool, I could be rather more convincing, I assure you. Your glib tongue does you no credit. You'd be surprised at the credit my tongue gets me, Your Reverence. Oh, I... What's going on here? It seems the revered mother is concerned about my undue influence over you. It is just concern. Your Worship, you must know how this looks. You might need to spell it out, my dear. This man is of Tevinto. His presence at your side. The rumors alone. What's wrong with him being from Tevinter, specifically? I'm fully aware that not everyone from the Imperium is the same. How kind of you to notice. Yet still you bow to the opinion of the masses. The opinion of the masses is based on centuries of evidence. What would you have me tell them? The truth? The truth is I do not know you, and neither do they. Thus, these rumors will continue. Oh? I'd like to hear what these rumors are, exactly. I... could not repeat them, Your Worship. Repeat them? So, you've shared them before. I... see. I meant no disrespect, Inquisitor, only to ask after this man's intentions. If you feel he is without ulterior motive, then I humbly beg forgiveness of you both. Well, that's something. She didn't get to you, did she? No. It takes more to get to me than thinly veiled accusations. You don't think she'll do anything? Do what? Yours is the good opinion I care about, not hers. 
Again, the dialogue is more or less the same regardless of your character choices. Giselle's awkward walk of shame is present whether you romance Dorian or not, but the vibes are so, so different if you do. Romance Dorian and suddenly Giselle's interventions take on the dimension of a well-meaning homophobe who wishes to safeguard the Inquisitor from his boyfriend's queer, corruptive influence. Dorian isn't just a mage from Devinter, he's a gay from Devinter, and his blood magic penis is twisting the Inquisitor's mind to heretical partialities. It feels like such a deliberate choice, even if it's not fully supported within the context of the story. There have been various hints across the franchise that queerness isn't fully accepted by the Chantry. So, I've known you for three years now. I give up. You beat me. What is it? You like boys, sheep, you slept with your sister. What are you talking about? What are you hiding? Nobody's this bloody clean. But according to the World of Thedas books, it's kinda okay so long as you're acceptably hush-hush about it. After all, Liliana is bisexual and Cassandra is, um... Okay, she's straight, but Jesus fucking Christ, look at her! What in the world were they thinking? In any case, it's clear that a lot of thought was put into this element of the story, and the game does become a lot more interesting if you romance the flamboyant homosexual. I do wish they had put this amount of brain power into the rest of the story. There was never going to be an easy answer to the mage dilemma. <laughs> But I guess mage oppression stories are like oxygen to centrists, and they'll all just die out if they don't craft yet another fictional demographic to scapegoat the shit out of. If there's one thing I'd criticize from Dorian's questline, it'd be that, in real life, conversion therapy doesn't work. You can't pray the gay away, and you can't force someone to be something they're not, no matter how much therapy you put them through. I would argue that making your conversion therapy stand-in be a very risk but potentially successful process is kind of missing the point. Conversion therapy is institutionalized abuse, not a medical procedure. It's another step towards extermination, and extermination is the only successful scenario it can accommodate. I get that we're dealing with magic and not wires strapped to people's dicks, and you can even argue that Dorian may not know about this magic in detail and thus can't outwardly say that it doesn't fucking work, but still, I'd rather he confirmed that magical head comp cannot ever work rather than imply that it occasionally might. To suggest otherwise lends conversion therapy a legitimacy within your story which is neither deserved nor based in reality. Sure it's bad at first, but look how happy these people are now that they have been fixed by the system! Despite my previous praise, this is a glaring oversight that I simply cannot excuse. They should have thought about this and how it thematically impacts their story for a little more than 10 seconds. They should have done better. Anyway, that's all I had to say. Essay over.